it turns out that it's actually more energy efficient to move up and down or to bounce or to, to bob as we walk. It's more energy efficient to do that than just walk straight. So just going through this up and down motion or ascension and descension in the sagittal plane to get technical, that is more energy efficient than just walking straight without this up and down motion. This is a bit counterintuitive, of course, because you would think extra movement means more energy expenditure, but it's actually not the case because it's about how that movement is done and how the movement is utilized. Just for a quick explanation, I've got just a basic setup here, a phase of the gait cycle, a phase of walking, where we have a leg swinging through, impacting the ground, of course. It is not nearly that hard, but you have to exaggerate these things. And then what happens to the upper body as this bobbing or, or bouncing motion actually follows through the body, because it does run through the whole body. In any case, let's say we're let's say we're right about here. We're pre-landing. This one leg here will be landing shortly. Now the reality is there is a bit of extra energy on the ascent, the going up. So I, I need to get this person higher up. That's very important to this whole bobbing, bouncing thing that's about to happen. So I'll probably have the heel coming off. And you know, you could call in the gastrox, maybe the soleus for that. And this will as a whole, now there'll be a few other muscles reinforcing probably quadriceps and hamstrings, but this will push the leg vertically upward, which means it also pushes the whole body vertically upward because it's, it's connected through the pelvis. At the same time, though, we do have some contraction of what we call the erector spinae muscles. They run all the way from the top to the bottom, and they're very complex, of course. There's a lot of different parts of them, but ultimately what they do is they, it's a good, good name, erector spinae, they erect the spine, so they'll pull like that, essentially lengthening the body, bringing it up and a little bit backwards. So that's where this some of this height is coming from. So this does take more energy to do. Understand the muscles have to contract extra to do this. Individually, you could say that just, just this part expends more energy than not raising the body up, ascending the body. But what happens next is what the body then takes advantage of. So at some point, the foot lands, and it's usually right at the end of this last phase. The foot lands not nearly this hard. You should not be crashing your foot down on the ground at any point. It should be a nice smooth roll. But just for illustration purposes, we've drawn in an explosion here. Again, not ideal. But in any case, as that heel lands, and it's really more of a roll, the force of that ascends up the leg. It's semi-resisting movement at this point. It means it's putting pressure upwards. We have to, what we ultimately want is that body to come down and forward. That's what we're aiming for. So we have to give some kind of a resistance to what happened in the previous element, the previous component where the body was raising up. So we need some kind of a resistance. And this is not a hard impact, it's just enough. Understand that the body is still traveling forward at this point. If one part were to stop moving, because we're separated into tissues, because we're separated into joints, moving parts that certainly are linked together but have semi-independent motion, certainly some parts are going to keep going. I mean, this is some of the basic principles of biomechanics or, or whiplash in the extreme. In the extreme. Anyways, the next point. After a certain point, a couple of things are going to happen. Now, the pelvis will be the relatively fixed point here. I've drawn a little X over it. But remember, we've still got this pressure that's ascending. You could call this, again, relative a relative fixed point. It's it's really a moving fixed point. Fixed point just means it's stopped, not, not that it, we're fixing something. We're stopping it from motion. So that's hence the X in this case. So it's a relative and very temporary fixation. It's only fixed. It's less moving than the other point. So it's a less moving point as opposed to a fixed point. It is not welded shut, just to be clear. Anyways, it's at this point that the body, again, is still 
going to be rotating forward. And so where we would have, say, like a extended lumbar spine here, we start to, as the body keeps going forward, we might have a little bit of a flex lumbar spine. It really just flattens. That's an exaggeration. But it flexes by comparison, flexes. Now, this for this to actually happen, what we need to do is get rid of this erector contraction, this thing right here that we talked about before. Because when that's holding on, it's going to maintain the body's position backwards and relatively vertical. So what it has to do is not just allow some passive folding. We have to inhibit what's what's called to stop from acting in cases of a muscle. We have to stop a muscle from firing. We have to stop those erectors from firing. So those are inhibited. So the body is allowed to then slouch. So this means that along this line we get a collapse downwards and we also because the weight of the body is above it should allow forward motion. Ultimately this summates if you will into a singular this kind of motion, an oblique, if you will, ultimately allowing the body to fall down a little bit at this point. Now, of course, we don't just fall forward. This is what you call a controlled fall. It's not just simply the person falls straight forward with every step. That would be a really poor form of walking. So at some at one point or another, we're going to be, reach the max comfortable length. This is not the absolute max, the anatomic limit of the body, but it will reach a point where it's bent forward enough to generate a little bit of stretch. It doesn't want to lengthen any further. It's economically not viable to do so. And so it starts the process all over again. So again, this leg is swinging through and eventually it will start to raise up again. We start the initiation, some lightning bolts, you know, nerves or something, start to trigger the erectors to start contracting again. And all that happens is we repeat the same cycle and eventually this leg is swung fully forward. It's ready to strike. It's ready to strike because again, we've got those muscles working. We've raised the body up. And so we can repeat this process. A lot of it is in the fall. This is this is a little bit hard to understand, but relatively simple once you once you experiment with it with yourself or just watch other people doing it. As we fall forward, let me get rid of this. As we fall forward, as we drop down like that and allow our body to slouch, this is low cost at this point. At the raising up point where we had to lift everything that was higher cost. It, it actually cost some muscular energy. But as we got to that high point to drop down to that low point, that's just gravity. Gravity is free. That's a huge plus. If gravity is free, it means it's comparatively low cost. So if the muscles, it takes a little bit more to bring us up, not really all that much, a little bit more, and then we can just fall from that point and just constantly be catching ourselves with the feet, with this striking point, if we can constantly be doing that, the net effect over the course of a whole cycle of gait, over the course of many steps, we ultimately are saving energy. And there's some great articles you can read on this. They're readily available explaining all this in far better detail than I can. But in any case, this is really cool because bouncing, it turns out, is way cheaper in the long run. It's not a bad thing you should totally go for it. Believe it or not, this is one of many uh, kind of semicircular ways the body moves in gait, or just in general. But if you look at the walking cycle, the gait cycle, from the top down, there is an arc to the feet. We don't want to be perfectly straight with the way our feet move either. They should swoop just a little bit on either side. And so as that leg is coming through, one one going, then the other going, one going, then the other going. There's there's real names for this. But as it does that, it makes a semicircular motion as it goes to this normal phase. And so thinking about all that, this is just simply how the body saves energy over time. Individually, you could break these down and say, oh, well, you could do it in a better way. But ultimately, the way the body is designed for smooth, circular winding and unwinding ultimately saves us a lot of effort and it saves us a lot of wear and tear too.
Turns out the easiest way to do it is, well, this is a good thing. It's a healthy thing to have a bounce in your step. And we all kind of know this intrinsically, but scientifically we have more justification for it now. Because a lot of it is predicated on, pop that back, predicated on these back muscles. It turns out it's very easy to do. The contraction, bringing that on and getting those muscles, oh, hey, getting those muscles to fire, that will happen kind of regardless of what you do. It wants to happen. It's very natural. So most of the time, it's just about relaxing, relaxing your back and allowing this to happen because it's totally normal. It's totally natural. And it's a good thing. Crazy, right?